We're back to Terry and Jesse show, and we're here with our Wednesday oh, update yeah. from our good friends, Church Militant on the other side of the country. We got an update on church, uh, church news, politics, and the culture wars by Joe Gallagher. Joe, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show, my friend. What do you have for us today? Terry and Jesse, thank you for having Our me on, pleasure. guys. I saw that you caught me just fixing my hair, so forgive me, but I had to make sure that we looked perfect for you guys. Well, hey, hey, Joe, I don't have that problem, brother. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, we we love you having you. You won't either in 30 years. Yeah, brother, it happens. It's the way it works. Yeah. Joe, what's going on with the news for tonight? We were excited. We always, every night, we're like, what's next, you know? Sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's always, I, you know, church builds really should be, we're in a, we're in a self-defeating uh, market. We don't want to have to report on all of these things. We'd much rather do, you know, priest saves cat from tree, record baptisms in every diocese right. of the country. We... But unfortunately not today. Uh, right now, first off is Senator Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz actually made comments saying that they need, Texas needs to repeal a decades old ban on sodomy um, that actually was uh, created as a mute point after mute point after uh, Lawrence v. Texas in 2003. Mm -hmm. So Senator Cruz is saying we need to get away with this ban on sodomy law. Interesting. That's very nervous, nerve wracking, Joe, you know. Joe, I'm, he, he's got a lot of guts. But I'm going to I'm not being pessimistic here, but I'm going to tell you why I don't think I think that the cat's out of that bag and you can't put the toothpaste back into the bottle. I'll tell you why. Because the Democrats are a completely sodomy party, 100 percent. OK, the Republicans have been infiltrated by sodomites. Yep. They have a section of Republicans called they're called the uh, log cabin Republicans. Mm -hmm. These are. Yeah. So they've already infiltrated the Republican Party. So a lot of them are not with Ted Cruz on this. They don't have this moral purity. All, all they care about is money and the economy and, 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 you know, strong military. They don't care about morality. So I'm with Ted Cruz. Yep. But I, again, one party is a complete sodomite party. And the Republican Party has been infected with first stage cancer through the, the log cabin Republicans. I, I, I don't know. Absolutely. I, yeah. You know, what's interesting with this is you know, it, at the end of the day, it's just a, it's, it's a state's rights argument. It doesn't matter what the issue they're talking about is. Ted Cruz, who has argued as an attorney in front of the Supreme Court, one of the few elite attorneys throughout the country to have been given the opportunity to do that, is simply saying this needs to be a state's right issue because you know, they're all saying, oh, Ted Cruz says that that ban needs to be repealed and that, you know, it should be fine. But just last week, he was saying that the Supreme Court made a big, dis big mistake when uh, ruling on Hodges. So it's just Ted Cruz saying this needs to become a state's rights issue again. And people just want to focus on the issue of whether it be abortion or gay marriage when Ted is looking at this from simply as a matter of fact with the Constitution versus state's autonomy. You know what? Uh, if if he argues it that way, then we have a chance. Yeah. Take mm. going, going back to the state because if you try to take it from the moral perspective, yeah, it's not gonna work. we're going to get slaughtered. Oh yeah. If you try to take it from, like you said, Joe, this is a states' rights issue. Let every state state decide uh, based on their constituents. Then we have a chance uh, at least to uh, abolish this in half of the country. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, moving moving forward to just the to the church scenario, obviously, everybody has their finger on what's going on in Germany with the synodal veg and the craziness that's coming out of that. And one of the few champions of solid doctrine, Cardinal Mueller, is slamming it yet again. But this time he he doesn't mince words. He says he uses this exact phrase <laughs> uncatholic machinations of german synodal heresy wow. he's not mincing strong words language. today yeah it's strong language it's appropriate wow well mm -hmm. you know what uh he's got nothing to lose i mean think about it he's he's been fired from the from the position of for the uh, the prefect for the congregation of the doctrine of the faith um at this point i mean uh his exit interview he's he's not a young man his exit interview is right around the corner if i were him I would be pulling an Ezekiel 318, uh, you know, where, where Ezekiel the prophet tells us, uh, hey, if, if you see somebody out in sin, you better tell him about his sin. If you don't tell him, his blood's going to be upon your soul at your judgment. And I think Cardinal Mueller, he feels that Ezekiel 318 pressure. He's saying, you know what? I'm an old man. I've got nothing to lose. My country's going off the rails. My exit interview with Jesus Christ is right around the corner. It's time to fire missiles of truth to these to this to this wall of lies. And Joe, just a quick note: when you mentioned Cardinal, 
Uh, Mueller, I think of also another great Cardinal. It seems like they're starting to speak up. Cardinal Seurat says this in a talk last week. The dream of the Western globalist elite is precisely to establish a new world religion for this little group, the ancient religions, and in particular the Catholic Church, must be transformed or die. I mean, for him to say that, for Mueller to say that, it's inspiring me as a layman. I don't know about you, but isn't it wonderful to have, you know, church leadership call it like it is? Oh, absolutely. Of course. It's wonderful to see the courage in the church hierarchy, especially right now. Yeah. And it's nice to see a, a beacon of truth when you have so many other bishops and prelates and priests and also laity as well who yeah. are preaching things that do, as Cardinal Mueller so clearly said, yeah, that constitute heresy. Heresy. Well, Joe, Joe I, I want to tip my hat off to Church Milton because I, I will tell you, a lot of priests and bishops that I've talked to, they say that they're energized <laughs> to speak out clearly from the pulpit because of people like Church Militant and other apostolates out there, VMPR. They see, they see lay people clamoring for truth and wanting the truth and speaking the truth. This, this also energizes our prelates just like they energize us when we hear a Cardinal Mueller, Cardinal Seurat, Bishop Strickland, and we wake up the next morning, we say, yeah. Man, we, That's we, right. we, got some, we got some good people on the fight with us. So I, I think it just works both ways. Iron sharpens iron. They sharpen us up when they speak moral truth and moral clarity. But we also encourage them by our apostolates uh, that are out there, again, trying to file, fire missiles of truth to this wall of lies. Yeah, you know, guys, if I if I could take a moment and actually sure. plug one of our initiatives called New Catacombs. OK, so many priests throughout the country want to uh, be involved and speak boldly from the pulpit, but they're afraid that they'll be facing repercussions should they preach truth. Look at Father James Altman, for example, even Father Heilman, what's going on with uh, right. Archbishop Hying in Madison. Yep. yep. When you have these fears now, those two are, are unique uh, circumstances that everybody knows about, but New Catacombs provides priests an anonymous way to come together and create statements that do pertain to church teaching. Awesome. Boldly. All they have to do is reach out to me, Joe Gallagher at churchmilton.com. We do not reveal their names to anyone. Only a handful of people, even at Church Milton, know who they are. And they collaborate and vote on statements that preach the truth in a time when you get in big, big trouble if you dare open your mouth. Great idea. I love that. And I know the priest will speak up. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Hey, so tell us about uh, third topic. the White House is having a, a problem redefining recession. <laughs> what, is, what part of no don't you understand? Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, first, I've, as we all know, the definition of a recession is two negative quarters of growth that, for the GDP. Yep. So that's it. Plain, simple. That's textbook. You open up the dictionary, you read it, and then you close it. Yeah. Is that what's happening? Yeah, it's what's looking like it's happening. And not only that, the second quarter was worse than the first. But when you look at Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen making these comments of, well, we're just slowing down. And this is happening throughout the world. You know, we're just trying our best to stop inflation. Janet Yellen said one thing that was the, the red flag, the bingo, when wa watching one of her recent interviews. Yeah. She said, I'm not saying we will definitely avoid a recession, <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Okay, well, there it is. At least she's just not li lying through her teeth. You can try and say, well, the definition doesn't apply. You can try and pull a German bishop and say that. But at the end of the day, we know what the definition is. The proof is in the pudding, and this is where we're heading. And it's just, it's, it's almost terrifying that there actually might be people out there. I mean, I'm not a professional economist, but I don't have to be one. I'm not a biologist, but I know what a woman is. And the same <laughs> thing's happening here. You, it, it's, it's evidence. And for them to try and act like that's not the case, instead of embrace it and say, okay, we need to fix this. Yeah. That's just a problem. Yeah. Well said. Joe, what well, about, tell us about yeah, your conference right. coming up, brother? That's right. I'm going to be there it. for it, and I want people to be there too. So tell us more about it. Oh, the call to action convention. Yes, we're really excited to have you on, Terry. That's going to be awesome on the evangelization panel. Right. The call to action convention is August 19th, August 20th, and August 21st. It's all day Saturday, all day Sunday, the 20th and 21st. In Detroit, right across the hall from where the election theft happened in Detroit at the TCF Center, now the Huntington Place, we will be giving Catholics the tools, the, the granular nitty-ditty details of what they need to do to affect change in the culture, and in the church. So often we walk away from conferences or conventions and speeches feeling really emboldened, but then you, you step out into the world and you don't know what to do next. That thing that people are missing when they leave those events, Church Militant will give them on this convention. Awesome. And how can they sign up for it, Joe? 
please go to cmresistance.com forward slash CTA. It's cmresistance.com forward slash CTA. If you click on Church Militant's homepage, you'll see a graphic on the right-hand side of the screen. It is all over our social medias, et cetera. But please, we want as many people to come because this is the time. This is how you invest in a future that won't have negative growth in GDP, that won't have more <laughs> heretical synodal ways. This is the convention to solve those issues. Joe Gallagher, wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm wow. so glad that you guys remind us every night. Yes. You guys talk about the fact that the politics is not one in Washington. It's one, it's one at the local level. Mm -hmm. The whole principle of subsidiarity, you guys are real, real good at that. <clears throat> Trying to get Catholics, just like worker ends, like worker bees, to get involved in their, in, in their particular area, uh, state, city, council. Uh, you guys are doing a, a yeoman's job making Catholics active where they live because that's the only way we're going to change the macro is by getting involved in the micro. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Overseeing our resistance program here, our activist uh, group uh, that is in every diocese throughout the country, over 7,000 people strong. The motto is restoring Christendom one soul at a time. Love it. One soul at a time. Mm. Well, we'll keep doing what you're doing, brother, and we'll look forward to having you on next week. And again, people can go. The news is at uh, what four o'clock? Is it seven o'clock your time or seven o'clock Eastern? Eastern Milton dot com. That's it. So check it out. And thanks again, Joe Gallagher, for joining us here on the Terry and Jesse Show. Oh, it's a pleasure, guys. Thank God you. God bless you.